Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome to my Mythic Blackwater Behemoth Kill Slash Current video. For this fight, we are just going to be charging in and killing the pufferfish right in the beginning. I'm using the Cyclone Ringer here. I was just kind of testing it out versus Lurkers because we were actually taking so much damage that Lurkers were kind of contributing to me just dying. So I didn't use it here. Um, and then after we kill pufferfish, get the debuff so we can be healed, right? Charge the boss off our cooldowns. And right now, this piercing barb that you're seeing that we're trying to line up for, that's the mythic mechanic. Basically, he picks a target, and everybody that stands between, you know, the boss and the target within that beam that he shoots out will share the damage. So you want to make sure you share that as much as possible. But at the same time, you also don't want to be too grouped, because if you're too grouped, this boss AoE is everybody that's in that clump. So right now, we're only running three melee. That way, the melee clump isn't too grouped. But we are basically required to soak every single one of those piercing barbs. Just because it's so much easier for melee to stack up and get in line with that. Because like right here, for example, the distance that we have to travel will shouldn't never, ever be that great. Because we're literally right on the boss, right? And then after basically the guy's energy is between 50 to 60%, right? We're coming over here to the second puffer fish, killing it so we can get a debuff again. And then after that, we go right back to the boss. Uh, you do, of course, always want, ideally... For you to be there when the pufferfish dies, that way you can always charge the pufferfish and you know not have to use a hero leap because you might need a hero leap later on too. As far as for talents on this fight, I am using Endless Rage, Double Time, Sudden Death, War Paint, Carnage, Ragnarok, and Siegebreaker. And I'm using Blooded Enemy, Rank 3, and Rank 2, Essence of the Focusing Iris. Looking back on this fight, it might have been possible for me to use Lucid Dreams with Anger Management just because each phase basically lasts a minute and 30 seconds, right? So right here, you know, my cooldowns are just coming up. You see Reckless coming out cooldown, right? Siegebreaker and Blood Enemy is about to come up cooldown in five seconds, but the boss is about to transition in like right now, basically. So it's kind of weird, right? Right as he transitions, all of your cooldowns come up. So unfortunately, this entire time that you're swimming over to the next platform, right? That you're killing the next Pufferfish, all your cooldowns are ready to go. So it did feel like kind of a waste um, maybe to not go that because if you go, you know, lucid dreams and you go anger management, you can, you know, use two recklessness on the guy. And then while you're swimming over here, right, your recklessness can be on cooldown. So uh, maybe that's something that I'll try out in a later pull, but or a later kill. So right now, that is what I ran with. Of course, go back to the pufferfish uh, since that did take two minutes, right? My cyclonic trinket is up. My cyclonic trinket should basically be up for every single one of the first pufferfish. So that is a good burst of damage if you guys need it for that. Uh, I just took it because we were just taking too much damage as melee, right? Right there, we were soaking that barb, right? But unfortunately, since we're all in melee, we're kind of clumped up. Uh, we did get AoE, so, you know, if I use Lurkers there, I might be dead, so. The rest of this fight is basically just exactly the same as before, right? Just making sure that you're aware of where the pufferfish is. Unfortunately, on this second platform, the second pufferfish is a little bit further away. And just really hope that your range doesn't kill it before you didn't get there. Because uh, it's very convenient for you to charge. So right here, a melee gets it. When a melee gets it, as far as for only having three melees, the most dangerous. Because if another range doesn't come over and help soak it, then, you know, there's very limited amount of people that are in there. And you might want to use your enrage gen there. So right here, luckily, pufferfish wasn't dead, right? So we can charge back to it. Uh, trying to leap on the platform, it wouldn't work on this other ledge, so I gotta wait a little bit, come back on the boss, and just keep DPSing down. Right now, I don't think anybody has enough DPS to be able to push this boss in two platforms. Um, maybe it will be possible in a few weeks, uh, once everybody is, you know, way more geared. But right now, we are gonna have to eventually go to that third platform. So right here, just DPSing down. The Shock Pulse, I think if you're full HP, you can, of course, just stay in as close as you want. Um, but since I was half HP there, I didn't want to take the risk, so I just walk away a little bit, you know, let it blow you back, and then um, you can just charge back to the boss afterwards. I think the most scary part of this fight is just making sure that, uh, obviously, you're soaking the barber as much as you can while you're trying to stack, but also not stack too much that you want to be further away from people. And then, of course, um, not getting too excited if you have, like, your ranged daughters dotting with the pufferfish, because you want to make sure that it doesn't die too early, right? Because... It shouldn't ever be a problem of killing it. Their HP isn't that high. Um, so I don't think you ever should actually have a situation where you just can't kill it in time, if that makes sense, right? Because once your melee switch to it, they'll die really, really quickly. So right here, once again, the third puffer, the third platform, first puffer fish, I am going to be using my Cyclonic Trinket on it because the cooldown basically is perfect for that. And then, you know, use my cooldown to charge back to the boss. Unfortunately, I got kind of stuck on the vines there. So just chilling there, recklessness, not hitting anything. But we got back to the boss and uh, we're good to go. As far as when you're using your second potion, um, you know, basically do it on either other time we have all of your cooldowns because I'm pretty sure we lost it on pull, right? So next one, just use it whenever more of your cooldowns are active. And uh, once again, we're just going to stay here. We're on full HP, so 
not too worried about that shock blast right so we just stay in melee dps as much as we can um i just feel like in mythic toxic spine definitely does go out a lot so just you know heads up on that um it's more so like you want to spread not necessarily for the toxic spine mechanic itself because that doesn't aoe but more for the aoe right because if you have the toxic spot on you and then you get aoe'd uh and then especially if you soak a um a barb at the same time you're probably dead if you get hit by the, all three of those abilities at the exact same time so just definitely pay attention to the amount of damage that you take in this fight right if your hp is low you might want to get a little bit further away from shock balls if not you can definitely just stay in melee it would not one shot you um and yeah and that's it for oh and the other thing that we've done on this fight mainly because it's progression um is on this last platform like right here this piercing barb whoever gets it uh nobody's soaking it we're just letting the guy die right so that way you know there's less of a risk for ray wide damage that we can guarantee okay just that one guy dies great and then everybody else is gonna keep dpsing the boss uh, so right here then the boss basically goes down right about now but yeah that'll be it for this video thanks for checking out guys feel free to subscribe to see more see ya